Hey folks, how you doing? Hope you can see me there. I'm a bit backlit here. I just wanted to check in with you, that you know that we're all safe and well here. I was up, I was up like a rocket this morning and out, away down to the coast. Mo and I took our coffee with us and had breakfast down at the bay and then a good long hike along the coast back round to the house. It's a glorious afternoon, so I'm going to, I'm going to say hello to you give you a wee bit of gear chat and then I'm going to get back out again. I'm going to go for a, a walk this evening, I think, um, because just too good to be indoors just now. So, gear chat. I'm going to talk very briefly about my sleeping bag collection or part of my sleeping bag collection. And it might uh, help you a little bit in choosing a suitable sleeping bag for yourself if you're thinking about heading out and about. I'm hoping that we're all going to be released soon, folks, and we can get back to the camping again. And that's why my attention was drawn to sleeping bags. So without further ado, let's crack on. I've got three sleeping bags to show you here. I've got an old Rab Atlas sleeping bag that has got a full power of 560. <laughs> yeah, you heard it here first, folks, 560, a very, very low rating. So um, back in the day, this was a fairly expensive sleeping bag, but uh, you would expect a full power of about 800 or even greater um, these days. So um, this was a sleeping bag that I used in the Himalayas. Uh, mostly I used this in the, the summertime. Remember, um, this is a, uh, it's a 750 weight. So although it's not got a very strong um, full power, full power is just the quality of the down and the, the other figure is how much of the material there is. So. This has got quite a lot of material. It's quite a bulky sleeping bag, but it's not particularly warm. And I say I use it as a summer sleeping bag because I was sleeping at altitude. I was invariably sleeping somewhere between four and, and 6,000 meters. So even um, in the summertime, I needed a reasonable bit of uh, protection from the cold in the, in the evening. So this is my old um, summer sleeping bag. This was my... Um, sort of late spring, summer, uh, autumn sleeping bag. If I was going to be a bit higher, a bit more exposed, or if I thought the, the conditions were going to be a bit uh, cooler, even in the summer, I would uh, take this. This is a, 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 an old Rab sleeping bag as well. It's only coincidence that three of my old expedition bags are Rab bags. I wasn't sponsored by Rab. I just uh, chose these as my uh, preferred piece of gear at that particular time. So this is a, called a Rab Summit. I don't, it's so old now, I can't find any details on it. But it definitely has a better fill power. So it's got better feathers in it, basically, better quality filling. And although when it packs down, it's roughly about the same size and weight as this, it is actually a much warmer sleeping bag. And then moving really quickly on, I've got this um, bag here. This is my expedition bag. This is a super expensive bag, very specialist piece of equipment uh, that I used for uh, winter camping in the Himalayas. I've uh, camped down to minus 40 and possibly below in this uh, sleeping bag and I've always been safe. I'm not saying that I've always been warm or comfortable, but I've always managed to get some sleep and I definitely felt um, safe. This sleeping bag comes with uh, some boots to keep your tootsies warm when you're in such cold conditions. And it has a really neat feature. When you're camping high in the thin air and the very dry air and breathing is uh, even quite painful at times, you lose dexterity very, very quickly. And even although that these sleeping bags have got high-end zips, I think they're YKK zips, it can be really difficult getting your sleeping bag closed. So let me show you this one. So, if I open that there about, um, what's that, about a third of the way down, you climb into the sleeping bag and then you can't get that zip up, so you've got that big gap, the sleeping bag is open, and all you can do is kind of, you know, try and uh, generate a little bit of heat. Remember, if you get into the sleeping bag and you're cold, if you generate a little bit of heat and you've got a decent quality sleeping bag, that heat is trapped, it causes the feathers to loft, to swell up, to... Um, act as a thermal barrier that prevents the heat escaping uh, into the tent and out into the, the, the night, into the mountain air. But 
it's going to take longer if you can't close your sleeping bag. So, this sleeping bag, you unzip it just in the same way to get in, but it's got that big baffle there that's all, also full of feathers. So when you climb into that, even if your fingers are a little bit numb and you can't get that zip closed, you're going to warm up a whole lot faster. And then when your fingers are working again, you can reduce the volume in the sleeping bag and uh, allow um, the warm air to be trapped in an even smaller space. These are old sleeping bags, so they don't use that hydrophobic down. Uh, now I think I always think that's a really strange term, hydrophobic down that's scared of water. Um, it refers to down that is coated in a chemical or, or material that uh, repels water and it stops the, uh, the down absorbing uh, water and uh, uh, any wet sleeping bag, whether it's down or synthetic, is not going to be as good as a dry sleeping bag. But a wet down sleeping bag, especially one of these older ones, is not going to be much use at all. It's not going to trap the heat at all. And in that instance, you can prevent that happening to a certain extent by uh, using uh, an outer layer. So this is uh, this is actually a relatively new baby bag that I've got. This is a wild country one. My old one was, I think it was a Terra Nova one that uh, I've got down in the gear room someplace. So actually I never paired this with these sleeping bags. My uh, my old Terra Nova one is actually a little bit bigger than this. It's a hooped bivy, um, although I seldom used it with a hoop, but it was big enough that I could get my big bulky expedition sleeping bag in. So these are some of my older sleeping bags that I used when I was living and working in the Himalaya. Anyhow, I want to move away from these sleeping bags and show you some synthetic sleeping bags. Can <laughs> you see one or two feathers floating about here? I'm not going to say anything about particular manufacturers and loss of feathers, but I have a wee bee in my bonnet about um, people making down clothing or down equipment and not being able to retain the down with inside the equipment. Especially when you're spending lots of money, it can be just a touch upsetting. Right, anyway, uh, back to the, the task. Let's go into the other room and I'll show you some of the synthetic sleeping bags. see me I'm still I'm still back right sorry about that I hope you can uh, if you can't see me at least I'm hoping you'll be able to hear me so synthetic sleeping bags this is a, a really bulky heavy um, but very warm synthetic sleeping bag it's also quite unusual in that it's got these baffles in it it's got this elasticated bit around the knee so if you're not used to sleeping in sleeping bags and you like to kind of roll about and tuck your knees up and all the rest of it this uh, will allow you to do that, so it's, uh, in some ways it's a sleeping bag designed for people that don't like sleeping in sleeping bags. I bought a job lot of these, I bought, I don't know, maybe about um, 20 or 30 of these. I was the manager of the research station in the Sino Himalaya, and one of my jobs was to make sure that people were safe when they were living at the station. So we provided uh, sleeping bags in each of the, the little rooms, the, the place is a, a wooden built uh, building with a whole series of little rooms uh, with bunk beds in them where people could uh, have a billet for the night before they went out to do their field work and uh, collecting or expeditioning or whatever they were doing. But whilst they were at the, the, the station at the base, um, we gave them access to these uh, sleeping bags. They were perfect for that. So that's really what I'm alluding to you in telling that story about the, the station. These big bulky bags are not really something that you're going to try and squash up and put into a rucksack and carry any distance. They're a wee bit heavy and they're certainly very bulky. They're going to take up a lot of volume in your rucksack. But for car camping or for um, carrying short distances, absolutely perfect. Relatively inexpensive, completely bomb proof, nice and cosy and warm, easy to sleep in and um, also relatively easily cleaned. You can reduce the likelihood of ever needing to clean it, of course, if you use something like a silk liner in it. Now this is a, a different beast altogether. So this is also a, th a synthetic sleeping bag. And 
this is uh, much smaller, much more packable, uh, and it's also a very warm sleeping bag. So I would use this, uh, typically I would consider this to be a three season sleeping bag for Scotland. I wouldn't go out onto the summits in the winter with this, but certainly for camping in the glens, spring, summer and autumn, no problem at all. Summit camping, probably just the summer, but maybe if, the, if it was a warm spring evening, if the forecast was good and uh, the temperature wasn't dropping too much, I would certainly consider using something like this and likewise in the autumn. The great thing about this sleeping bag is they're relatively inexpensive and as I say they're pretty bomb proof as well. You can increase the rating of this sleeping bag. I'm not going to talk about ratings because I don't actually think they, um, they're of any use. Most people will decide whether they sleep hot or they sleep cold and, and really um, it's down to yourself to decide what is a comfort rating for a sleeping bag. I've never personally found these indicative figures to be much use. I, I generally disregard them and I kind of go with my own experience. Um, but if you want to use this type of sleeping bag in colder conditions, you can get a, um, a liner. So this, uh, this, this liner is designed to go with this sleeping bag. So it's in a Jungalak uh, sleeping bag and it's in a Jungalak uh, liner. Also um, synthetic. So it's a Norwegian company and this is a Powertech type sleeping bag. Now, on a few expeditions, I, I did a lot of work in Sichuan province, which um, is a neighbouring province to where I was based. It had a, or has a much wetter climate. And so I tended to leave my down sleeping bags behind. I was always worried about these old down sleeping bags getting wet and then, you know, some of these uh, trips were, they weren't one or two nights, they weren't one or two weeks. Sometimes they weren't even one or two months. They were very long trips where your sleeping bag was your cocoon, where you had that comfort and safety uh, away from the world and away from the expedition that was going on round about you. You could just escape for a wee while. And so keeping your sleep system in good order was really important. And when I was in Sichuan, I would quite often take this because uh, also I was in a ridge and furrow landscape. So I could be down at 1800 uh, meters above sea level where it was relatively warm and I would be gradually hiking up, 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 up. In the, the bottom of the, the glen, the bottom of the valley, I'd be sleeping in this. But as I got up to 4,000 meters, 5,000 meters, I would be sleeping in this. And when I was up at 6,000 meters, I would be sleeping in this and this, and probably <laughs> with my jacket on as well. So I found this uh, combo quite good. So although it was a little bit bulky, and maybe a little bit heavier than my down sleeping bag. I, I like the flexibility. I like being able to sleep with this when it was, I was down at lower elevation. It was nice and warm and big molecules of oxygen to breathe in. And then when I was getting up into the cold, thin, dry air, I could put the two together. And in the transition between one and the other, I could uh, just use this on its own. When I'm Running around Scotland, especially in the summertime, and if I'm traveling fast and light and just snatching a few hours of sleep on the summits or um, on a ridge or even down in the glen, uh, generally speaking in the, the summer months, I'll try and sleep as high as possible just to escape the midges. I use a synthetic sleeping bag and I use something like this. Um, I think this sleeping bag cost me about 35 pounds. It's a Vango sleeping bag. I think it's the 200, is it? Yeah, it's called the Ultralight 200. I think they do a 100 and they maybe do a three or a 400 as well. It's, um, it's not particularly warm, um, but it, it is warm enough, especially if you're prepared to wear some of your clothes. So I always carry a light thermal jacket when I'm in the hills in Scotland in the summertime. And, and that jacket mostly lives in my rucksack throughout the day. I only put it on in the evening when I'm cooking up or when I'm sitting enjoying the, the view, maybe if there's a bit of sunset or something like that, you need that extra layer on. If it's a cold night, I would tend to keep it on while I'm in my sleeping bag. And uh, I've summit camped um, 
in the summer in Scotland many times with a cheap and cheerful sleeping bag uh, such as this. And if you get a bit of condensation or whatever uh, in the tent, I have a, a, a wee, uh, tiny wee tent, uh, which is a wonderful piece of equipment, but it does tend to produce a bit of condensation. I get a bit of dampness in this sleeping bag, I don't mind. Generally speaking, if I'm using this, I'm going fast at night over the hills and I'm only going to be out for a couple of nights or maybe three nights at the most. If I'm going to be out for longer, I would probably take a better bit of equipment. So what that, what equipment might that be? Let's go and have a wee look at that. So, this is my a glimpse at my modern equipment. I'm not suggesting that you should invest in equipment of this nature, folks, because it is a fairly big investment, but I guess if I was only going to have two sleeping bags in my entire collection, these are the two that I would have. They're, they, they look very similar, they're just uh, different weights of the same thing. They're made by a company called Tundra. Tundra are not sponsoring me. Um, and uh, the model is pure and dry. Pure, I think, refers to the fact that it's ethically sourced down and the dry refers to the fact that it's got a water repellent or resistant uh, outer layer. I wouldn't regard it as a waterproof sleeping bag, but this uh, Pertex outer is going to um, keep your sleeping bag dry. It's certainly going to protect it from condensation or if you're brewing up in the tent and uh, you have a mishap and, and knock the stove over, you get water on it, it's not going to soak through into your sleeping bag if you get it off fast enough. Obviously, it's not got waterproof zips on it or anything like that, so it isn't properly waterproof and it's not waterproof uh, at all on the inside. So over a very prolonged period, if you're not airing it during the day, it will um, take a little bit of moisture from your body. So you still have to have camp management uh, practices in place to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, this has got a full power, what did I say about that other one, 560 my old sleeping bag, this is 880, so it just shows you how um, things have uh, progressed, so uh, this is a much much uh, better sleeping bag in terms of being able to keep you warm for less weight and less bulk. And this is the, the hydrophobic down as, as well as the uh, water repellent outer. So this one here, uh, it's a really lightweight sleeping bag. Let me see, have I got a stuff sack for it? Yeah, so that's the sack that it comes with. So about, when it's tied up, it's about that size. So it's not particularly big or bulky or heavy in your rucksack. I don't know how much it weighs, but not very much. We top tip folks, when you get your sleeping bag and you get that, just throw it away and then Especially if you're investing quite heavily in one of these more expensive sleeping bags, a few extra pounds and buy a waterproof stuff sack. So this is uh, this one's made by Low Alpine, but there's lots of companies make them. So let me tap a bit of air there and show you. So your sleeping bag is inside there in your rucksack, hammering down with rain. You get your tent set up in the evening and you take your sleeping bag out and it's completely dry and, and that's roughly the, the size of it when it's packed down and I would I would certainly valley camp spring summer and autumn in Scotland with this um, sleeping bag I would also uh, summit camp uh, throughout the summer months and indeed I would also summit camp in this in parts of the spring and the autumn season depending on what the weather forecast was like and how cold I thought it was going to go down to in the night time and also whether I was prepared to put on an extra layer when I was inside my sleeping bag. Um, some of you will be saying, oh, down sleeping bag, you're best to um, sleep naked in a down sleeping bag so that your uh, heat, the heat escapes from your body, causes the sleeping bag to loft and then um, you start off a little bit cold but then it, it all warms up and all the heat is retained. Um, I think the argument against wearing a layer is that you, you stop the heat from your body getting through and into the down to loft it up. Well, uh, that's the theory. In practice, I prefer to have a thin layer on when I get into my sleeping bag, usually just a base layer. Um, and if I do actually feel cold and I feel that I need 
extra down, then I have a super lightweight down jacket that lives in my, my rucksack, I mentioned it before, and I would tend to put that on. So that's my um, three season sleeping bag, and this is my winter sleeping bag. Now, what can I say? There is a, a big disadvantage in this system, and that is the cost of this. So, buying two of these sleeping bags, buying your winter one and um, your three season one, it's going to set you back, I don't know, maybe 1200, 1300 pounds for both of them. Um, so, it's a considerable amount of money, folks. I totally understand that. If I was only going to um, invest in one expensive sleeping bag, I would make sure that my winter sleeping bag is the bee's knees, top notch. I would go high end with my winter sleeping bag simply because it's the safe thing to do. To have a, a proper piece of equipment if you're going to be sleeping high in the Scottish mountains in winter time to make sure um, that you're safe. And this piece of equipment, well, you could go and buy the the, the, the Van Gogh 35 or 40 pound sleeping bag that I showed earlier and I think for most of your summer camping you would get away with it um, quite the thing. I suppose I've been doing this for many years now and it's um, I don't think the outdoors is a hobby I think it's a way of life for me so I don't mind it, uh, investing a little bit more but I do understand that some people might not uh, be able to do that or might not be prepared to do it. So that's it folks, a wee glimpse at some of my sleeping bags. <laughs> I decided not to show you them all because <laughs> we'd be here for days. Just an opportunity to check in folks. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to get out and about again soon. Enjoy this amazing weather. Hopefully we'll be able to share an adventure too. They're all going round and round in my head. I just need released and then I can take you with me, we can get out and about have a bit of fun. But for the next 10 minutes I'm going to spend the time putting these all back in my gear room and then I'm going to go for a late afternoon and evening hike. So take care folks, thanks for tuning in, stay safe, we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.